It's pretty rare these days for any tech product to have a 13 year life cycle, but Windows XP and its iconic green hill hung on for almost that long before Microsoft decided to finally stop supporting it. And if you travel to Armenia, you'll actually find that over half the country still uses XP. So how the heck did an operating system that looked like it was designed by little tykes end up ruling the world and more importantly, stubbornly refuse to give up its crown for so dang long? Well, when XP burst onto the scene in late 2001, it was already sorely overdue. Home users had been on the buggy Windows 9X series since 1995, and these operating systems were fundamentally based on MS-DOS, which had been around since 1981. So it wasn't surprising that the underlying code of Windows 95, 98, and me wasn't going to be adequate for newer software and hardware. Windows XP was instead based on Windows NT, a more business operated family of operating systems that hadn't previously been marketed to home users. This meant in 2001, people got their first taste of the benefits of NT, faster performance, better compatibility with bleeding edge products, and an OS that wouldn't immediately blue screen if you hurt its feelings. But perhaps the bigger sea change that XP brought to the table was that it really started to popularize the idea that computers and accessories should just work without needing to go through complicated configuration procedures. Windows XP made it easy to automatically connect to known Wi-Fi networks. It was a good thing considering how much internet usage exploded between 1995 and 2001. USB and plug and play support was also significantly improved. So instead of having to install a driver every single time you plugged in a new gadget, you instead got a cheery notification in the bottom right of your screen, happily telling you it was ready to use. And even though some folks disliked how XP had a kids play area look to it, many others welcomed the marriage of a much more reliable operating system with a user interface that at least tried to be accessible and visually pleasing. Remember that XP came out roughly six years before the original iPhone, but had lots of similar design cues with rounded edges, bright colors, and icons that tried to clearly convey meaning to the user. So in many ways, XP was one of the first products that got society at large thinking of electronics as intuitive and pretty, and not modeled after like the last hardest level of a video game. But this only explains why XP became popular, not how it stayed popular for so long. We'll tell you why that happened right after we thank Grammarly for sponsoring this video. Grammarly is here to help you get your work done and be more productive. It provides comprehensive spelling and grammar suggestions to ensure your writing is professional, mistake-free, and polished. Simply install the desktop app, log in, and start typing. And there's also Grammarly Premium, which provides more in-depth feedback on your writing, such as tone adjustments that make you sound confident and ensure you're coming across the way you want to. That's how I wanted to come across. There's even a premium full sentence rewrite feature that helps you rephrase hard to read sentences for clarity. Go to grammarly.com slash techwiki to sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium today. Now part of the reason XP had such incredible longevity was that its successor, Windows Vista, was absolutely infuriating. Although like Windows XP, it had relatively high system requirements at launch time, Vista's launch was a mess because Microsoft did a poor job of communicating to both PC consumers and manufacturers exactly what hardware they'd need to run Vista smoothly. To the extent that manufacturers would put misleading Vista compatible stickers on poorly equipped machines that disappointed average consumers. The poor performance, technical issues, and the high cost of Vista led many users to just stay on XP until Windows 7 came along in 2009. And even though Windows 7 was very well received, XP was still incredibly easy for even lower end machines to run by 2009 due to advancements in hardware, meaning it didn't exactly run out of steam just because Windows 7 came along. In fact, official support for desktop versions of Windows XP lasted nearly three years beyond Microsoft's typical support timeline. Because it was so paradigm shifting and reasonably stable, it remained good enough for users and businesses who just didn't feel a need to put in the effort and money to upgrade. Just look at how much Windows 11 is struggling against Windows 10, which is now seven years old. Even now, XP is still the operating system of choice for a surprising number of ATMs, medical systems, and irredentist wannabe dictators worldwide because people just don't wanna spend the time and the money to upgrade a working system, unsecure as it may be, or they need XP to run certain kinds of older software. 
And believe it or not, XP has lasted longer than that famous green hill. Don't get us wrong, it's still there, but these days it's covered in delicious wine grapes. It's a win-win. Thanks for watching this tech wiki. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, check out our other videos, comment below with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe and follow tech wiki. We keep, just keep making these. We just churn them out. Get your little bag ready and just pop them right in. <laughs>